comes to this question they are saying that three process are arriving at time zero with execution times of 10 20 and 30 units respectively so what does that mean they are giving this information so they are saying that p1 p2 and p3 are available and their arrival times are 0 0 and 0 right and their burst times which means execution times are 10 20 and 30 and again they are saying that each process spends first 20 percent of execution time doing io which means the, this execution time is again divided into three parts first 20 percent you know executing io and you know doing io and then 70 percent doing computation which means at cpu and then the last 10 percent again doing the io so again this execution time is three parts one part is io and then computation and again io right then compute the percentage of idle time for you know shortest remaining time first if this is the case then they are asking us to find out the idle time the cpu idle time uh, for you know consider the percentage of cpu idle time it is cpu idle time for shortest remaining time first so it is shortest remaining time first first write, write down the burst time it is saying that they have three types one is io and then the cpu and then io this is the total uh, execution time right and the first first one is saying that it requires 10 units of time you know first one is saying that p1 requires 10 units of time and out of which 20 percent is doing io which means two units is io and then 70 percent is cpu which means seven and then 10 percent is io which means one and similarly second one which is having 20 units of execution time is going to spend 20 percent of io which means four and then 70 percent doing uh, you know execution cpu which means 14 and then uh, again 20 percent 10 percent doing io which means uh, two and the last one is uh, 30 30 units is again split up this way 20 percent io which means six and again uh, 70 percent cpu which means 21 and again 10 percent io which means three got it so this is what they have given us so initially this is io and then cpu and then this right so now we are going to use shortest remaining job first so initially if i start at zero there is no process to execute uh, even though all the process are arriving at uh, time zero all of them wants to perform the io first so all of them are going to go to io for some time right therefore uh, what happens is for two units no process is available so cpu is idle from 0 to 2 and then process p1 becomes available therefore p1 becomes available here and i can run it i can run it till completion the reason is this is the smallest job and all the jobs are available therefore there is no further job which will be smaller than this so you can run it till completion so i can run it till completion till 9 right by time 9 right both p2 and p3 will be available but then what should i run i should run p2 therefore i am going to run because p2 is the shorter one therefore i am going to run p2 for how, how long four units which means till 13 i am going to run it and then p2 is at this point p2 will go for io so till how long will it go for io so it, if it is starting at 13 to go for io and it requires 14 units of io therefore it is going till 27 till 27 units this p2 will go for io isn't it right and now in the meanwhile you know you cannot keep the cpu idle anyway p3 is available so let's let's schedule p3 now if i schedule p3 p3 will run for 21 units of time oh this is not uh, one second there is a small mistake here see this now in this case p2 got scheduled at 9 by the time it finished its io right therefore it, it could run for 14 units 14 units is the cpu time so from 9 till 14 it will come to it will run till completion so 9 plus 14 is how much 23 so till 23 units it will run isn't it fine now P p2 is also over and then it will go for io io will take for two units no problem and next i have to schedule p3 now p3 will run for initially 21 units so what is 23 plus 21 it is i think 40 23 plus 21 is 44 right so fill till 44 this p3 is going to run right and then it will go for io for 3 which means till 45 it is going to go for io 
so this this is ideal and this is ideal cpu is going to be ideal during these two times and next again next schedule can start and it is a dilemma whether to take this part as ideal or not because it can start with the next one right so you need not take this one as the ideal part the reason is simple so once p3 is done with its execution cpu is again free and cpu could be scheduled for other process right therefore ideal time is only two so out of this entire time out of this 44 units cpu is ideal only for two units therefore percentage of time it is ideal is 2 by 44 into 100 okay so don't include this the reason is this could have been you know included in some other schedule so by this time cpu is free then cpu could be allocated to some other process right we are not holding it in in case if you have one more burst time here then maybe you could include it otherwise it is not required okay